Hey guys, welcome back. So before I get into the video, I have a really exciting announcement to make. I will be exhibiting my Lexi Eclectic projects at open source this year. The event will be held at the Cal Palace in San Francisco on June the 15th and June the 16th. If you're interested in attending this event, please find a link to buy tickets in the description. I'll keep you guys updated on the location of my booth via Instagram or YouTube community posts. So if you happen to be there, please look out for the Lexi Eclectic booth and come say hi. And now, back to the video. So a while back, one of you suggested getting an aquarium to test the action of my fish skull flies. And at the time I was against the idea because I was picturing a big fish tank taking up tons of space in our then one bedroom apartment. That was until I saw this fly testing tank by Flyman being advertised on Bass Pro Shop's website. It's a small portable tank for testing your flies. It takes up very little space and it's easy to pack away. At first I was considering purchasing one for myself but then I thought, why not just make my own? It was the perfect excuse to make something fun that I could share with you guys in a video. So while working on this project, I happened upon this interesting review by a guy from Mad Outfitters. It really helped me understand how this fly tank functioned and worked. So one thing that he mentioned that I think is important to bear in mind is that the tank gives you a good idea of how the material looks in the water, but it doesn't really give you the idea of the full scope of your fly's action when you're retrieving it through the water. Like for instance, the fly acts differently when you pause in between retrieves and that makes up part of the action, which you don't really get a sense of because it's constantly being like pushed by the current from the water pump. So with this in mind, I still think it's a pretty useful product to have in your fly tying station and I still wanted to make my own. So the first thing that I did when I started this project was I looked for a tiny water pump on Amazon and purchased it. Having the water pump in front of me helped me factor in its dimensions into the project while I was 3D modeling it on Fusion 360. I began the 3D modeling process by mapping out approximate width and height of how big I wanted the tank to be. I then used an image of waves to trace out the profile shapes that I wanted. After finishing off the design, I suddenly realized that my printer's build area would not be big enough to print this in one piece. So at this stage I had two options. Option 1, cut the model into three pieces and then print them separately. Or option 2, reduce the length of the model and then print it out in one piece. So I figured that the tank would still probably work even with the reduced length, so I opted for the size reduction. I also 3D modeled mockups of 3mm thick clear acrylic side windows for each side of the tank. I then created a DFX file of the profile to send to a laser cutter. In case you were wondering, a DFX file is a CAD data file format that is used to share drawing data for the purpose of CNC manufacture. Laser cutting is an example of CNC manufacturing. I went with a company called Pinoco for the laser cutting job. Their turnaround time was reasonable and the two cut pieces cost me about $50. So I had a few issues while trying to print out the tank. And for some reason, I didn't think to film the beginning of the process or any of the issues that I had at this stage. But basically the printer crashed when it was at 20% with an M112 error. 
and after troubleshooting I realized that it was because the thermistor wire that was at the bottom of the heat bed was hanging out and getting caught on the printer's frame every time the heat bed was being moved backwards and forwards. I think this is due to the fact that we recently moved to a new apartment and while moving the printer the wire must have been pulled out of the place where it's usually tucked in. Luckily after taking some necessary steps and tucking the wire back in, the printer seemed to work fine. So at this stage I was sitting with a partially printed tank, which is the blue piece that you see in the photo. I didn't feel like wasting the printing material, so I cut the 3D model at the height that the print crashed and printed the rest of the model out separately. I wanted to disguise the seam between the two prints, so I printed the rest out in two different colors to make it look more deliberate. I used the change filament option to switch filaments about 50% into the print. Once the prints were done, I super glued the pieces together. So the printed model, as it was, would probably not have been watertight, and then would have absorbed water and leaked. I think it's because of the microscopic gaps in between each printed layer that allows water to seep through. So to seal it, I coated it with XTC 3D resin. I slotted in the acrylic pieces while I painted on the coat so that they would still be able to fit after the coat dries. And as you can see, I obviously kept the protective stickers on the acrylic pieces while doing this. After drying, I had to smooth out the bottom part of the tank where the resin had hardened unevenly. I started off with 180 grit sanding paper to sand down the large bumps quickly. I then smoothed out the rough areas with 6000 grit sanding paper. I thought that maybe the 6000 grit would be enough to smooth it out, but without a polisher it would always look a bit dull. Also because the first print came out a bit rough on the edges, I ended up sanding a bit into the PLA material. So I decided to coat it in resin again. Once the resin was dry, I then removed the protective film of the acrylic pieces to insert them into the sides of the tank. Music 
I glued them in using super glue. Once the super glue had dried, I sealed the inner seams between the tank body and the acrylic pieces with clear aquarium silicone. I went over the seams with the silicone a few times so that it would properly fill in the gaps. I scraped the excess off with an old coupon card. It had nice rounded edges that made it work relatively well for the purpose. After allowing the silicone to dry for two days, I filled the tank with water to test for any leaks. Thank goodness there were no leaks and so it was finally time to test it with the pump and a fly. It worked okay with the medium red fly. But when I tested it with my large diver fly, the different directions of water current made the fly move weirdly. I noticed that the flyman tank had a cylinder tube in the middle of the tank to help create a focused current of water. So I decided to try prototyping cylinder tubes out of a plastic folder I had lying around and some tape. I then went ahead and tested the red fly with the different size tubes. It seemed to make a significant difference. I then tested the large fly again and the movement of this fly was also a lot better in the tubes. So since the prototype tubes worked so well, I then went ahead and purchased a clear acrylic cylinder tube off Amazon. It was quite a bit longer than I needed so I cut it down to size and then sanded the rough edges. I then tested the newly cut tube to make sure that the length was good and it seemed to work perfectly. I hot glued a suction cup to the bottom of the tube to keep the tube stationary in the tank. The Flyman tank has a small tippet hook that helps position your fly in front of the pump water flow. So I decided to make my own by bending a paper clip and attaching it to a suction cup. One odd thing that I noticed is that every time I fill the tank with water, the inside resin coated area of the tank gets covered in a white chalky substance, and I'm not really sure why. I wiped it down with isopropyl alcohol, and that seemed to get rid of the white stains. But the white stains keep coming back as soon as I fill it up with water again. So I've seen super glue discolor my prints like this and I'm wondering maybe filling the tank with water helped distribute whatever is in the super glue that makes it discolor things like that. So the other thing that might be happening 
is we have very hard tap water. So I thought maybe the tap water was coating the inside with lime, but this seems kind of strange because it happens immediately. It's not like something that builds up over a large amount of time. So I thought maybe it would help if I used distilled water instead of tap water, but it still seems to become white and chalky inside. If any of you guys have any theories as to why this might be happening, please leave a comment below. Anyway, without further ado, here is the final result. I'm quite happy with how it turned out. Obviously, it's a lot shorter than the flyman tank and can only be used to test one fly, but I think it's pretty neat. This will be one of the projects that I will have on display at open source. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!